taking a look at the state of the New York Giants, plus a potential solution to a rather disturbing statistic. All that and more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lockdown Giants podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trena, and I am your host of the Lockdown Giants podcast. I've been covering the New York Giants for just about 30 years now, long time. And yes, including the last 10 years, which have been a little bit lean, but hopefully brighter skies are ahead. And I want to thank you for tuning in, making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen. We have a packed show for you today, as uh, always. Uh, We're going to start off by getting you caught up on the latest news. And then I'm going to talk about a statistic that when I came across this statistic, it really bothered me. So I went and I tried to come up with a solution to address the statistic. So that's going to be in the first segment. And then in segments two and three, I'm going to be joined by Good friend, Ed Valentine, a big blue view. We're going to talk about the state of the Giants from more of a macro level and what's next for this team, this 0-3 football team, if there's any hope for this unit in what appears to be a season that is just slipping away. So that is what's coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. And again, thank you for tuning in. And I want to start off with just a couple quick uh, news items ESPN reported that offensive lineman Ben Bredesen has a hand injury and is expected to miss time. Now, on uh, Monday, the Giants had uh, signed offensive lineman Wes Martin off of the Washington football team's practice squad. So they did a poaching. Putting two and two together, now I think we see why the Giants made that move. Now, Bredesen, for those uh, not keeping score, was um, the left guard of the team. So the Giants now, they opened up the season with Shane Lemieux as their left guard. He lasted about 17 snaps in week one before being um, relieved by Bredesen after his knee gave out. Then the following week, we had the shakeup of the offensive line where Nick Gates was moved out to left guard and Billy Price was was put in at center. Gates, of course, uh, unfortunately to- uh, broke his leg and um, they had to put Bredesen back in there at left guard. Then we get to um, last week, Bredesen got the start at left guard. All right. So the Giants are potentially looking at their fourth different starting left guard this season. Not good when you're trying to build continuity on the offensive line. Not good when the interior of the offensive line in particular has had problems with stunts and twists. So the giants who, by the way, also had a big workout on Tuesday, a lot of offensive linemen had uh, came in to work out just having some, having some real rotten luck with the offensive line. And in particular that left guard spot. So it does look like Bredesen is uh not going to play. And if he doesn't play, I believe the, the plan is to get Wes Martin in there. So that's the, uh, that's keeping you up to date on the comings and goings and what to expect this week. Now I mentioned a statistic that I came across that made me really go, wow. It was, it was just a shocker for me. And that statistic is a number, I'm going to give you the number, 75.4%. Now, what does that statistic stand for? That's the percentage of pass attempts allowed by the Giants defense. So opposing quarterbacks have completed 75.4% of their pass attempts against the Giants passing defense. That is the second worst figure in the NFL. Yikes, right? So... Right now, um, we at Giants Country 
are working on a couple things about the pass rush. I'm going to have an article up, up probably by the time you hear this podcast, but I also wanted to talk about the back end of the defense and in particular, the use of the safeties, because that's a part of the problem. I think when I look at the film and I just jotted down a couple of ideas for what it's worth, how I might approach fixing it. So I'm just going to go over what I put down here. I don't know if this would necessarily fix it, but hey, look, at this point, can it hurt to try? So let's start off with the three safeties involved, uh, Jabril Peppers, Julian Love, and Xavier McKinney. Logan Ryan doesn't need to be touched in this particular group. The way I see it, those three safeties that I, t- that I just mentioned, Peppers, Love, and McKinney, some of the things they're being asked to do so far in the first three weeks aren't really the best use of their talent. So let's start with Peppers. Peppers, to me, as a coverage safety, I wouldn't give him a whole lot of coverage responsibility. Okay. Um, to me, Peppers is more of a box safety. He's a good blitzer. He's a good punt returner. I would limit his coverage snaps if I were the Giants. And let me give you some stats from uh, last week's game. Okay. So last week, according to Pro Football Focus, Peppers had uh, 13 snaps in the slot, two at outside cornerback, posted a 103.5 rating in 27 coverage snaps, allowed five out of six passes against him to be completed for 53 yards, 22 after the catch, and a long of 25. All right, Peppers in coverage, just, you know, you always get a little bit of an adventure with him. So that is not the plan I would use um, the way that I would deploy Peppers. I would have him playing closer to the box, which is where his strength is. And I would take some of those coverage snaps that Peppers got. I would actually give some of them to Julian Love because it's interesting. Julian Love against the run, I watch him and I see a guy who doesn't really have great instincts against the run and tends to react a little too late and then take bad angles. But in coverage, I think Julian Love can be, you know, can be just fine. I mean, I get it. He doesn't have, he's not the the fastest guy in the world, but I think he can be sufficient. So to give you some stats, uh, Julian Love had per pro football focus, seven coverage snaps and was targeted once and did not allow a completion. Okay, his seven snaps, by the way, um, one at uh, cornerback, outside cornerback, one at free safety, and seven in the slot. To me, play Julian Love more in the slot. I think that's a better fit for what he does. And Darnay Holmes, you know, he he tries, and I get it, but I, you get the impression that Darnay Holmes are kind of the, the, the plan long term is to maybe phase him out a little bit once Aaron Robinson gets healthy and back on the field from the pup list. So uh, that's what I would try there. And then Xavier McKinney, let's talk about him. Now we all know about the problems the Giants have had in the middle of the field covering tight ends. We see, we've seen it every week. I would try Xavier McKinney as the guy to cover tight ends as opposed to maybe Jabril Peppers. All right. Um, Again, let me give you some stats here. McKinney had 41 coverage snaps, allowed two of two uh, pass targets to be completed for four yards, six after the catch. Okay, so somewhere along the line, he had a loss of yardage there, I think. And the one touchdown to Lee Smith. And that was uh, I think there was a mix up or something on that coverage. All right. So. If I'm the Giants, I might say to myself, okay, you know what? Let me try McKinney against tight ends and see how he does with covering these guys. Because right now, Peppers, when he gets that assignment, it doesn't really work out all the time. And I think I would take my chances faster with McKinney than I would with Peppers, especially when it comes to a position that for whatever reason has been a mystery for this team to figure out how to defend for quite some time. So those are my ideas on how to potentially fix the defense, the defensive secondary. And um, 
you know, the pass rush again is, is part of it, but you know what? The guys on the back end have to do their part and hold their coverage in order to give the guys up front an opportunity to get to the quarterback and move them off a spot. So that's my theory. Let me know if you agree or disagree. The email is in the show notes, or if you're watching this on YouTube, just drop a comment below and tell me what you think. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Ed Valentine of Big Blue View is going to join me, and we're going to talk about the state of the New York Giants and then what the immediate future potentially holds for this team. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, Giant fans, before we continue on with the Locked on Giants podcast, let me tell you about Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, info, and sign-up bonuses for all your sporting needs by heading over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device. When you open an account and use our special promo code NFL100, you will get a 100% welcome bonus on your initial deposit. Again, that's code NFL100 for your 100% welcome bonus. Terms and conditions apply. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. And Giant fans, as a beat reporter of the New York Giants, I do a lot of driving during the week, back and forth between my home and East Rutherford, where the Giants are located. And I've got to tell you about this new app, Get Upside. This app has absolutely been a godsend. Every time I fill up at the pump, I'm saving 25 cents per gallon. That's amazing. That savings is going to add up for me over time and leave me with some extra money to enjoy an extra night out, uh, a dinner out, a movie, or what have you. And right now, you can take advantage of the same app. Simply download the GetUpside app from the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store. And when you use our special promo code TOUCHDOWN, you will get up to 50 cents off on your first fill up. Now, the great thing about Get, Get Upside is that you can cash out anytime in a variety of ways. So you can have it deposited right to your bank account. You can have it sent to you via PayPal. You can get an Amazon gift card. There are so many ways and there's no limit on the cash out. So check them out. It's called Get Upside. And our special promo code is touchdown for 50 cents off your first fill up. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Lock on Giants podcast. And I'm joined now by good friend Ed Valentine, a big blue view. And uh, it's only been three weeks. It feels like it's been three years with this Giants football team, 0-3 after losing three very winnable games. And Ed, let's kind of recap what we've had here, the state of this franchise, which is not very good, and where this franchise goes from here. I mean, let's start off with with trends. I mean, you study the film as well as I do. Um, You have been at the games like I have. Are you seeing some disturbing trends from this football team regarding these losses that they've been putting together? Well, Patty, do we really have to go through the last three weeks again? Do we really have to? Can't we talk about something so, fun? <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, we can I talk know, about your I golf know. game, but you know, no, we that's, know how that's, bad your golf game that, is. That's not good. Oh, come on. I played well the last time I played, Patty. Oh, wow. For, for, once, for <laughs> once this year, I played well, but that didn't help the Giants. But, no. but anyway, Patty, the most disturbing trend, to be honest with you, is that we see mistake after mistake after mistake, and we're seeing it, you know, week after week against Washington, it was 11 or 12 penalties against Atlanta. It was, I think eight penalties. And so many of these penalties are coming at key times. You're getting, you're getting penalties that are pushing the giants out of the red zone. You're getting penalties in the end zone that are, giving teams, you know, first and goal at the one yard line, you're getting dropped interceptions, you're getting mistakes that are clearly related to costing the Giants points, you're getting week after week, you're getting wasted timeouts because the Giants can't get lined up properly, or because the they're letting the play clock, you know, run out. And, and for me, you know, that that's the common the common trend, we can talk about the offensive line. We can talk about the lack of the running game. You know, we can talk about the defense 
breaking down in the last two minutes, but, but the common theme is undisciplined football. And, and to me, that's, that's the biggest problem because if they play disciplined football, they'd be two and one right now. Yeah. Now you made, you made an interesting point on Sunday in the press box that I'm going to ask you about. And that was going back to training camp, how you felt that while Joe judge didn't run a country club, he also maybe was a little too conservative with some of the injured guys and just, you know, some of the approaches he took to where maybe this team wasn't as ready as it could have been for week one. So can you just expand a little bit on that and, and just tell the folks, you know, your full thoughts well, on that? Well, Patty, what I wrote at Big Blue View was that I thought that the first two weeks of the season for the Giants were really the most important two weeks of the year. They had two winnable games in five days. They had, you know, they, they faced Denver, which was a team that I think won six games or five games a year ago. They faced Washington, which, yeah, they won the NFC East last year, but but really what they won seven games to do it. They were, you know, they were bringing a backup quarterback. You know, Washington is a is a 500 team at best to me. So I, I felt like those, like the start of this season, because things have been so bad for so long and we've seen so many 0-2 starts, you know, in the last decade, I felt like the start of the season was really important because everybody needed some hope, needed some optimism, needed something to to hang on to and and some reason to believe that that what the Giants were trying to sell us was which was better days are here, better days are coming you know, that, that those were more than just empty words. Um, I felt like, you know, yes, the Giants had some injuries with, with, with Kadarius Tony having, you know, various issues with, with, uh, with Kenny Galladay having a hamstring issue, but I just felt like so many players were sitting out of practices. So many players were doing nothing. There were so many walk through practices you know so um there was an opportunity that i think you and i talked about in the second preseason game to get some of the offensive players onto the field for a quarter or so that the giants didn't take i mean i thought the fact that that daniel jones didn't play in either one of the first two preseason games I mean, come on, this is not Tom Brady. This is not an established all pro. This is not a team with an established offensive line. They needed the snaps. They needed the reps. I just felt like the way that that training camp and the preseason were run, that that this Giants team entered week one not really ready to play. Kenny Galladay kind of hinted at that. He kind of hinted over and over that, that, well, there's going to be some rust. There's going to be some, you know, we're not going to be firing on all cylinders right away. And and the problem with that is I didn't want to, I didn't necessarily want to believe it, but he turned out to be right. And, and the problem is you're, you're in an 0 2 hole before the season's a week old. And now the Giants have lost another football game that they should not have lost on Sunday against Atlanta. I, I just felt like 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 the way that that training camp and, and the preseason were conducted, I I felt like this team was not ready to play good football in week one. And and with two games in five days, that turned out to be a huge problem. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. And, you know, Joe Judge even said, hinted that, you know, the first couple of games might be like preseason. And that's not what you want to hear. I mean, you had three preseason games to work out all the kinks. And now you're saying, oh, well, we need another two of the regular season to, to work out, you know, the kinks. All right, Giant fans, a little bit more to go here on the Lock on Giants podcast. And, you know, after this show is over, I think I'm going to grab myself a healthy, delicious, low carb and low sugar built bar. I have a variety of flavors from my customized box that I put together and it is really a great treat. Low carb, low sugar, as I mentioned, high protein. It fills me up. 
and it satisfies my sweet tooth because it's covered in real milk chocolate. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your customized box on your first order with our special promo code LOCK15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, when you go to BuiltBar.com. Again, that's BuiltBar.com, promo code LOCK15. Ed, let's switch now to the future, which, you know, can go any way, obviously, but where do the Giants go from here in order to get this right? Where do they start? I mean, the team is what it is. You're not going to swap players out. Coaching, I mean, you can probably do only so much. I, I don't know necessarily that mass firings is going to solve anything. So where do they where do they go from here? Where do they start? Well, Patty, I think it starts with, with everybody looking in the mirror. I, and, and we're talking about yeah, there, there's nothing at this point that really that that Dave Gettleman can do. I mean, we could talk about the mistakes that Gettleman made. We can talk about hubris in building the offensive line if you want to. We can talk about whether or not Kadarius Tony was the right pick at number twenty. We you know we can talk about all of those things, but none of those things are going to help the 2021 Giants win some football games and not wind up going you know, two and 15 and winding up with the number two overall pick in the draft or something like that. I think there are, there are enough mistakes being made, you know, from the top down from Joe judge, you know, look from looking at this team and the, the number of mistakes and the amount of undisciplined play that it, that it puts on the field. I mean, I think week one against Denver, there were three unnecessary roughness penalties for late hits out of bounds. There have been something like 20 combined penalties over the last two weeks. So many missed opportunities, so many, you know, fumbles in the red zone, you know, errant snaps, just wasted timeouts. I think from the top down, they've got to look in the mirror and and realize that I don't think anyone to this point has has really played football that they can be proud of and really coached football that they can be proud of. And, and, and you're not going to turn this roster upside down at this point. You're not going to change this offense into the Kansas City Chiefs at this point. But l- let me say something else, Patty. I sat and I listened to all of the pressers yesterday and – and I, I love Logan Ryan. I think Logan Ryan is, is a terrific human being. I think that Logan Ryan pours his heart and soul into trying to be a good football player and trying to do things right. But I'm sorry. I listened to, to Logan Ryan talk yesterday, and I'm sorry it was excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse from Logan Ryan, who's supposed to be a leader of this football team. It's... Well, I dropped that interception, but I dropped that first interception, but it's not like he had to, it's not like he threw it right to me. I had to, I had to twist my body to try to catch it. And on the second one that he dropped, which was one over the middle where he made a nice break on the ball. It's like, well, the receiver hit my arm, but half the safeties in the league don't even have a chance to make that play anyway. And so what difference does it make? You had a chance to make the play and you didn't make it. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm, and, and I don't want to hear, well, I'm here four hours before the game catching footballs off the jugs machine. Nobody cares, Logan, you didn't make the plays that needed to get made. So it bothered me to hear excuses coming from people who are supposed to be the leaders of this football team, because that's what bad teams do is they make excuses and they don't take accountability. And, and I think that's where it needs to start is players need to need to take accountability. Coaches need to take accountability and and figure out why this is happening. Yeah. Good point. I mean, we hear week after week, we're making progress, we're getting better and it's just not showing up. And it's almost like to me, and tell me if you disagree, it's almost like you're trying to insult my intelligence, what I'm seeing on the field. 
okay, yeah, maybe I don't know the X's and O's and the play calls like you do as well, you know, if you're on the team, but I know when somebody should catch a football and doesn't, I know when somebody commits a stupid penalty, I know when, you know, a, a timeout is wasted. I mean, if I know this and the fans know this, I mean, stop insulting our intelligence and, and be straight up with us. Say, look, we didn't get it done. We made mistakes. We need to fix them. Don't t- sit there and say, well, we're making progress. You know, that's like saying, oh, you know, you didn't win the contest, but you know, you were in the contest and you were being considered to win the contest. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody gets participation trophies right. in the NFL, Patty. I mean, they get nice paychecks, yeah. but, but, you know, I asked Joe and I think it was after the, after the Washington game, I, I asked Joe at one point, and I, like I said, I can't remember if it was after Washington or after Denver, um, you know, cause he was giving his typical week to week improvement. We saw a lot of things that we liked. We did a lot of good things. We just didn't finish the game. You know, I, I see improvement every time we get on the field. And, and I asked, and, and Joe didn't like the question. I asked him, you know, Joe, when, when, when does that stop mattering? And when do we, you know, and, and when do, does that improvement have to translate to results on the field? You know, and, and he said, well, it'll translate, you know, basically when, you know, when we earn it, basically, or something along that line. He didn't like the question, but I think it's a valid one because at some point, at some point, like you said, they're they're insulting our intelligence. They're insulting the intelligence of the fan base, and they're just they're just feeding us a line of, a line of, of garbage to 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 try to convince themselves that it's not as bad as it really looks. And that's actually you know it's funny you mentioned that question. I asked him that last year when he kept talking about improvement, 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 and I flat out said, Joe, you keep mentioning improvement. What are you seeing? You, you, you're not def- define improvement. What are you seeing that isn't showing up to the rest of us? And he had said to me at the time, um, and I think he did like the questions. So I don't know. Maybe it was just how, how each question was presented. But anyway, he said to me at the time, you know, I see things on film, you know, techniques that are improving, um, you know, decisions that are improving and, and all that stuff. But the bottom line, Ed, is if it's not showing up on game day, it doesn't mean a darn thing. If it's That's not showing up on game day, Patty, then it's not really happening. I'm it's sorry. Not, it's, exactly. It's like, you know, if a tree falls and no one's there to see it, can, can you say that, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you gotta exactly. See it. Exactly. I mean, we can talk, Patty, we can talk about the talent. We can talk about the offensive line. We can talk about now Blake Martinez being out for the year. We can talk about, all of those things that the giants don't have. And yet, yet when you look at it on, on paper, on talent, statistically, all of those things, statistically, the giants were better than the Falcons yesterday. Talent wise, Mm -hmm. they're better than the Falcons. Talent wise, to be honest with you, watching that football game against Washington, they're better than the Washington football team. There's no reason for them not to be two and one, except that they walked into both of those games and didn't do enough things right to win them. And that's on the players. That's on the coaches that to be clear, we can, we can kill Dave Gettleman for the state of the offensive line, But those two losses are not on Dave Gettleman, in my view. Those two losses are on the players and on the coaches because those were games that should have been won. You know, we can we can argue all day long about mistakes that that Gettleman made, about whether Jason Garrett is the right offensive coordinator and 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 maybe he's not. But this football team should still be two and one. And it's the players and the coaches in that room that are responsible for that. Well said, well said. So hopefully fingers crossed things get better. I mean, I don't know if they will or not, but 
this has been a hell of a start to the season. So Ed, we've been, we've been talking about this for too many years, Patty. I know. I know. Thank you so much for the time today. Giant fans. Thank you for tuning in. Keep it here on the Locked on Giants podcast all week. We've got plenty more content coming up. Lots to talk about as we get you ready for the next game on the schedule, the new Orleans saints for Ed Valentine. I'm Patricia Trana. Thank you. And we will talk to you again soon.